I would say actually you know, a vast number of films do philosophy well because, I mean, in a sense, it's, it's almost a shame to single out individual ones because I think that film in itself is a kind of form of philosophy. I mean, I, I think that's a fascinating claim, I really do. And, and uh, it, it's been around for a while, yeah. you know, the, the, the thought that film is philosophy. And um, I, I personally, I'm very um, tempted to the view. There are some concerns, though, kind of historical concerns of what's happened to the debate as a result of people saying that. Unfortunately, what's happened within philosophy is that philosophers have thought to themselves, well, hold on, what's this claim mean if philosophy is film? And, when film is philosophy, if there's some kind of identity relationship between them. And they've got really internal and abdicated and thought, ah, what does that tell us about philosophy? Those are very interesting question. And, and then philosophers retreat back into that self-reflective position, which is not what the whole idea was. I take it as for God, Stanley Cavell and Stephen Mulhall and people who are famous for this. They, they wanted to engage. They wanted philosophers to do something with film. I, I, I tend to think that, like, film as as an art form, like all art forms, can, is an occasion to think about things and to think about them if the work is good in fresh ways and more deeply than you might otherwise do. And it also, and we'll probably end up talking about this on the panel a bit, has a, an interesting quality unlike maybe some of the other art forms in that it looks quite like reality, but it's not. And so that I think often about this, that the, the, the the artifice is hidden in the kinds of films that I like. And so there's a kind of parallel experiencing of things as you might experience them in life, but with very subtle differences in the capacity uh, there that a good filmmaker can inflect the experience. That is what I think I find so fascinating about it. The, the kind of thing for me is that I, as a person with an analytic background uh, in philosophy, um, I, I, I read sort of Cavell or whatever I, 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 as a sort of, you know, I, I have no special connection to that. You know, it's a, it's a kind of literary exercise and a, and a way of deepening your encounter with cinema. That is good. So in that sense, I think all art is philosophical. Film has that particular quality of, of this small distancing effect. And... and and it also, it captures a certain experiential uh, uh, kind of, you know, like it mirrors experiential patterns. That is really extraordinary. And so it unfolds in time. It, 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 it mirrors the movement of attention. It, it, can, it can be kind of didactic or it can, be, it can sit back. It, it can model different ways of experiencing. And certainly talk very deeply about the human condition, which for me is not really a part of the philosophical enterprise as I understand it. One thing that happens in philosophy is that you have a fetish of the single authorial figure, right? The person who writes the paper. And, and there's a kind of analog in the film industry with the director, right? But then you look at films like, for example, Inside Out, which I think is actually a really, really good film. But you don't think about, I mean, some people do think about the director, but I don't think about the director, I think about the production company and I think yeah. about the collective that produces it. So who is it who you think is doing the philosophy when philosophy is done not? Well, I think, I mean, I think again, it is, it is a communal thing, but, but that very gap that Lenny's talking about, which is if you like, the stimulus or the irritant or the thing which is going to make the thing happen. Um, that comes about as a, a combination of the things that the, the director and the writer, and if you're thinking about something like Pixar, <laughs> thousands and thousands yeah. of other people all working together have made. But there's always got to be that little unfinished bit, and I think that that is where the best cinema is. is that, and then you know, we, the audience, have to supply that. There are several different ways in which the philosophy is happening in film, and, 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 and several different ways in which philosophy, generally speaking, happens when an author writes a book and it's read and uh, presents it before an audience and then is re-read and taught and responded to. They get these strange loops uh, and, and the text, in a way, the original text becomes transformed. I, I think the same thing is true in film. Um, in a way, one has to ask the question, what is it that's specifically philosophical about about what's going on? Is it 
a particular subject matter? Is it a particular kind of way of a you know, approaching that subject matter? I think I would go for the latter. Um, it's not just that you can philosophize about the big issues and the big questions. You can go on philosophizing about very small things, trying to get it right, the phenomenology yeah. of things. That the phenomenology of things, absolutely. Like being, you know, the, some of the most powerful experiences I've had in cinema. There's a tiny bit in a Salem film, and it's in an apartment, and it's just a couple of people shouting words at each other. Uh, you're located somewhere in the kind of corridor between rooms. And it is such a vivid, uh, you know, it's, it's not an experience because an experience is as, as, as had in the real world very different. But it somehow essentializes or, or grounds kind of the business of being in the world. That, that, those are, you know, and then, I mean, there are some films which are overtly, I think there's very, I think you're pretty much right, Francine, that there are very few films which are about, self-consciously about philosophical issues mm. that are any good. One exception might be uh, My Night with More, the That's Romer the film. Thing, right? Just when they talk about, yeah. you know, Pascal's yeah. Wager and stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's a kind of, I mean, in a beautiful thematic way, there is a philosophical idea woven through the story. Yes. And Romer generally does that. He, he presents himself as a, as a thinker about something in, in a way, and that, that alerts you to that possibility, doesn't it? Yes. I mean, people like The Matrix. Funny enough, for me, any film that does the kind of the analytic philosophy thing, which is, you know, what The Matrix is kind of used to illustrate sometimes, mm -hmm. problems in epistemology or whatever, mm -hmm. that is the, I mean, I think it's great fun, but I don't think it's, I'm much more interested in the, as you said, the phenomenological, the, uh, you know, um, vivid ones than the kind of topically relevant ones. This is funny, isn't it? My night with Maud. Uh, the male character, his name, I can't remember. Actually. Me too. But um, uh, the Chantignon uh, character. Yes. I mean, it's kind of an anti philosopher film in a way, isn't it? Because he's so. Uh, he ru yeah. He, he ruins the position yeah, he of the philosopher. Mm. He's up himself so much that uh, it's really very painful That's right. for a philosopher to watch. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh it my is. God. <laughs> I probably like that. You know. There's this discussion about how different kinds of philosophy engage with film. Scholarship. And from an analytic background, it doesn't necessarily seem like it fits in the same way. No, I don't think it does. I mean, I think it can make you, like any, a walk in the park can be enough to stimulate, you know, there are, there are kind of, like, listening to music can put you into the mode to have, to do good analytic philosophy. And sometimes films act in that way, but I've never really watched a film which, which inspired those sorts of reflections in the way that films can inspire the the grander yeah. questions which which are dealt with in different sort of philosophy but also you know it's the stuff of art I mean I think art and philosophy are deeply related and that maybe is what we're really saying the point at which I find myself thinking most philosophically when I'm watching a film actually I think and this is me is just when I'm trying to think what the director must have been thinking in order to be able to arrange things mm. um, you know how do you because if a, if a characteristic philosophical question is, you know, how is it possible that this should be the case? How is it possible for an action to be an action or this action to be the action that it is? Um, then in a general kind of way, you're asking very much the kinds of questions that, are, that one would imagine the director yeah. are asking in a film and thinking, well, you know, you could have shot that, film, that scene in, in ten or so different ways. Now, why, what was it that made that the right way mm. or, or not the right way? You are partly asking philosophical questions about the very possibility of representing accurately or justly a human emotion or yeah. event. And it does tend to be more about perspective, doesn't it? It won't be about plot or dialogue or any of those things. It'll be much more about where you find yourself in relation to what appears to be happening. Yes. That's dead right. And, and in fact, sometimes you need quite a... The best films seem very simple. Um, plot, which is sometimes involves tropes that we're familiar with, because that locates you, and then it's possible to pull, to stretch the elastic away from that, and it's in that stretch that the inter interesting things happen. I mean, if you're sitting in a, I mean, one of the things that works for me in in good filmmaking is movement in and out of um, it's 
its own narrative concern. So uh, you can take seriously, I mean, Malik does this, where you kind of are involved in the character's dilemma and in their kind of, in the belief desire equations of the thing. And then, to an extent that's maybe become a little bit heavy handed more recently, the use of nature and the use of the unconcerned otherness of things yes. does help. I mean, that's a philosophical position, the idea, I mean, that question of whether we are in any way central yeah. to the universe or whether we're kind of, you know, that idea of, of, of the kind of illusion of centrality that the self is, those questions can be beautifully posed in, in cinema. That's a lovely phrase, the unconcerned illness of things. I, I suspect you've been reading more <laughs> not non-analytic philosophy. Maybe, maybe, yeah. <laughs> tremendously maybe. I'm going to keep that my, myself. But it's interesting, because that's, that's what Malik at his best does. But when other people sort of do a Malik, as it were, they never make it quite unconcerned enough. To no, they don't, they don't. There's some great metaphor. Exactly. <laughs> that's right. The films that you've been referencing are typically fall within what people normally call the kind of like high art area. Um, are there films that would be positioned within low culture that you think do philosophy um, in an interesting way? Yeah, I mean, you, you mentioned Pixar's Inside Out. I mean, that probably is on the high art end of things, actually, for all sorts of reasons. Um, so, but obviously, with a, with a big appeal. I, I do think comedy, I do think there's a depth in, I'm a huge fan of Laurel and Hardy and of Slapstick which is a beautiful... Uh, I, I think what I'm saying is that there are low art traditions in filmmaking which are, which are as high as anything else. And, but that goes across... A board, that's a vaudeville. That's a vaudeville generally. It's not specific to cinema. But it, vaudeville does make me think about the kind of fragility of, of other people and it, 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 it creates a tremendous... It's a, it, cre it's a, it drives a certain sort of empathy. I don't know if that's particularly... Philosophical, but it does deepen me somehow. I quite like films myself, which um, have a mixture of high and low. I mean, it, for example, it seems to me that um, you know, The Third Man is mm -hmm. not obviously a, a very mm -hmm. high-level film. In many ways, it has a kind of a thriller-ish mm -hmm. aspect to it. Some of the films of Truffaut, we, we, we tend to think of as high-end, but if you can, can pair them with Godard or yeah. something, yeah. they're, they're quite, quite yeah. middle. And, I mean, I think one of the things that possibly happens there is, is simply the, the attention of the director to the editing and the cutting and the, and the shaping of the film. Um, that can be as philosophically stimulating in, mm. in low end as, as much as in high end. Yeah. I mean, obviously the distinction is kind of fragile anyway, but um, I suppose I was, I, was, I was thinking particularly of horror films and watching Get Out recently, which I think is brilliant, and I think it does critical race theory in an amazing way mm. as well. And I think that's an example of film which has a mass appeal, but is doing really, really good work in a way that Agreed. engages lots of people. Yeah. I mean, I'm about to make one, which is mm -hmm. sort of, kind of, well, it's a ghost story, in the, maybe in the Jamesian Sweet. tradition, right? And it... Hence Yorkshire, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and the, no, that's a very scary part. Yeah, the, the funny thing for me is that I've never been drawn to making genre, and this, this is very stretched, and it's sort of what I was saying earlier about having this spine that you can then you can misbehave as a director tremendously because people kind of know where they are or at least you know what they expect and that's a very handy thing to be able to play with um, and there is a there is a, a kind of human depth to this I think if I get it right you know that's the, the idea so I suppose I am going to test out that idea when, that, that you could make something with a with those cues that still does something interesting I feel like that's a really good place to end on. Just a nice cliffhanger. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the one that sunk his career.